Hey kids, it's Mr. Fry here, hope you're well. Out and about on the uh, big old Triumph Rocket 3 on a sad day, because this is uh, actually the last ride, at least for the time being, that I'm going to be having on the uh, Rocket 3R. So stick around, stay tuned. If you're interested in this bike, I'm going to give you my sort of final summary and thoughts, closing thoughts on living with this bike. Okay, so I've been lucky enough to borrow this uh, press bike from Triumph UK for the last week. It's in great demand, this bike, uh, according to Triumph, as you can imagine. Well, all sorts of facets of the press, not just the motorcycle press, but GQ magazine, the Daily Telegraph. Those are the sort of people that are getting this bike after me, I think. So uh, thanks to Triumph for squeezing me in. Uh, absolutely brilliant that I've had the chance to get to know the bike a little bit over that time. And uh, brought you through a few videos on that. If you haven't seen my other videos, I'll put some links towards the end uh, to those videos. But uh, this is my final ride, they're coming to pick it up tomorrow. It's a bit of a sad day, because I have really enjoyed having this bike. I was really looking forward to having it anyway, since the day I first saw the Rocket 3, uh, when there were some uh, sneak pictures, I think uh, occurred in MCN, of it, uh, I think it was some sort of a dealership event where the uh, Rocket TFC was first shown. In fact, let's go this way, just to keep out of the way of that traffic. And I just thought it looked awesome. I thought it looked like a concept bike that would never make it to production. But in fact, here we are, 18 months, two years later, and the bike is very much in production. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing, and it looks very much like the original concept drawings that I saw. I think hats off to Trump for actually making this thing happen. It's an incredible bit of kit. I won't uh, go through the headline figures and spec and so on. You can watch my other videos for that. You know all about that. But suffice to say, this bike is all about the engine and the torque. Two and a half litre engine, more torque than any other bike you can currently buy by a large margin. Big cruiser style, might not be to everyone's taste, but I absolutely love the looks of this bike. I think it is beautiful. And uh, it's interesting because I haven't got that much experience on cruiser bikes. I'm not really a cruiser man, but it's the sort of glaring gap in my collection, if you like, in my main cave. I've got a sports bike, I've got naked bikes, off-road bikes, adventure bikes. I'm very lucky to pretty much have all the genres covered, except cruisers. Uh, so if I were to buy another bike, and I'm not saying I'm going to, I've got any spare cash, alas, but if I did, then it would probably be a cruiser that I would get, because that does seem to be something I'm missing, as I say. The question, of course, would be what cruiser? Well, the two cruisers that I really like the looks of are the XD Avil and this, the Rocket 3. There are one or two others as well. I was lucky enough to borrow the XD Avil over Christmas, had that for a month, really got to know that machine. Really looking forward to it. Again, if you haven't seen my videos on that, I'll put some links up in the uh, corners somewhere so you can go and check those out. But given it was a bike I was looking forward to riding, let's just open this up a bit and catch up with this white van. Oh man, this thing is listening. Woo! <laughs> oh, you're never tired of doing that on this. Yeah, where was I? Yeah, where's the XDAVL I was really looking forward to riding? Uh, the more I rode it, the less I liked it. Uh, for various reasons, again, go and check out my videos on that for those reasons. That kind of put the set the scene in my mind of maybe cruisers aren't for me. So I was looking forward to riding the rocket, but I thought actually maybe I won't get on with it too well because I didn't get on with the XD Avil so well. So uh, I started with fairly low expectations, it has to be said. But even though I'd only read and seen glowing reviews about the rocket. But funny enough, every time I've jumped on this bike, the more I've gelled with it, the more I've liked it. The handling on this really is lovely. It feels light, and I know it's a 300 plus kilogram bike, but through these big sweepers, the handling is beautiful. And I'm not just saying it, the handling for a cruiser is beautiful, it genuinely is. The handling on this is nice. The fact you've got that massive rear tyre, you wouldn't know. I mean, it, I've been on adventure bikes that handle much worse than this. Okay, it's not as flick flack as a sports bike, but you wouldn't expect that. But it's up there with, uh, you know, naked. It's not the best naked, but again, it's just much better handling than you'd expect of a bike that's got such massive geometry, such a massive rear tyre and long wheelbase and so on. You do have to manhandle it round the corners, but you sort of expect that. So the handling is nice, the engine goes without saying. Just, it's just got so much power, always there. And in all the revs, I mean the, I don't know what the torque curve is like on this, but I'm guessing it's relatively flat, because pretty much you can leave it set in second or third gear and just ride in that all the time and you can go fast, slow, anywhere in between. The bike never complains, I love that about it. 
And another big plus about the bike, as far as I'm concerned, again, it being a cruiser, is it's not this particular version, the R, isn't a feet forward cruiser. My feet are you know, not in a sporty position, like so I'm sat upright with wide handlebars, but I'm led forward a little bit, and my feet, I think looking at my knees, my knees are a little bit acute, in fact. Certainly my feet are out the front like they normally are in cruisers, in a position that I really don't get on with. I guess if you've always ridden Harleys or always ridden cruisers, maybe you're in the US or somewhere like that, then you're used to those and other bikes feel weird. But uh, to me, I've really struggled to get, get on with a feet forward position. With one exception, actually, thinking about it. I did ride the Triumph Speedmaster uh, last year, about a year ago, and that came out. I had that for uh, about a month. And I really did get on well with that. That was feet forward. Hi, just a quickie, we'll be back to the main video in a moment. Lots of people have been asking me, whereabouts can you get the uh, t-shirts, hoodies, etc. that you sometimes see me wearing here on the channel? Well, they come from my website, that's www.themissendonflyer.com uh, and there not only can you get the uh, t-shirts and hoodies, but you can get sweatshirts, you can get mugs, you can get stickers, and there's all sorts of new stuff being added in the future as well. So it's well worth checking that out. Not only is my merchandise there, uh, but also there's lots of articles, information on my bikes, my contact details, all that kind of stuff. So it's well worth checking out. That's www.themissendonflyer.com Com. All right, let's get back to the main video. Uh, and then oddly, I had the bobber as well, the Triumph bobber, which I thought I'd get on with. Didn't get on with that so well, that was feet forward. So I don't know, maybe there's no there's no science to this. Some bikes you get on with, some you don't. But uh, anyway, certainly this Rocket 3 with the mid-set mid pegs. I've really got on absolutely fine with it. And I'm feeling sort of comfortable, I don't want to talk anything up, but I'm feeling comfortable at one with the bike now. Just literally cruising around here, I'm doing what? 49 miles an hour on this B road, so actually just coming into a 40 limit here. So just slide down, slow down slightly. But you know, it doesn't feel ponderous, it doesn't feel difficult to ride. Nothing about this bike is difficult. Which is surprising when you read those headline figures about the horsepower and torque, you think it's going to be a frightening bit of kit to jump on, but it, nothing's further from the truth. It cossets you with electronics, thank goodness. It makes for a very easy ride, low seat height as well, so I'm only a short fella at five foot eight feet flat on the deck. Never feels like I'm going to drop it. Again, I don't want to talk anything up, but uh, you know, your feet are firm on the floor, so if you are vertically challenged like myself, you'll be able to ride this no problem. Even my mate Ken would get on all right with one of these. But what really makes it great is how it makes you feel. It's just a really cool bike. Again, these are all subjective things. I think it's cool. And as a result of thinking that it looks cool and therefore thinking that I look cool, not necessarily a uh, <laughs> extrapolation that works. But it just makes you feel cool riding it. Feel cool, not feel cool. Okay. So you pull out on me, sir. Thank you. Of course, part of that feeling cool riding the bike is uh, the kit you're wearing. So I often get asked, you know, what is that jacket or what are those gloves you're wearing or whatever. So I thought I'd try and make a point on these videos where I have the two cameras set up and you can actually see what I'm wearing to actually tell you. Now I've blown it immediately because I forgot to look up what these various bits of kit I'm wearing are called, but I'll put on the screen. So to start with, I've got my Kite Heaty gloves. I've talked about these before. They're brilliant in the winter. No heaty grips on the Rocket, unfortunately. I don't know if they're available as an option, but they're not fitted on this bike. And I'm riding this in winter. It's like a eight degree day. So I've got these switched on, my hands are warm and toasty. I do remember these, these are the Kais G601s. I've talked about them before on my channel. They've transformed my winter riding, they really have. I'll stick a link below as to where you can get them. I've used all sorts of heated gloves, but uh, these are by far the best. You can run them either on the internal batteries, which is what I'm doing at the moment, because I'm obviously riding somebody else's bike, or you can get an adapter and ride them off the bike's battery as well. So uh, I actually prefer them off the internal batteries. And depending on how cold it is and what uh, setting you've got them on, you'll get a good hour's ride. So if you're just out for a black like I am here on a Saturday afternoon, then they're perfect for this sort of riding. So that's the gloves. Next up, this jacket, retro style jacket. It's from Oxford, can't remember what it's called. I'll put the name up above. And again, I'll, I'll put a link down below as to exactly what it's called and where you can get it. Uh, but it's new to me this year. It's not, well, I was gonna say it's not a, not a winter jacket, but that's not true. It's got a thermal liner in it. So I'm quite toasty at the moment, but not only have I got the thermal liner in this, but I'm wearing a puffer jacket underneath as well. And that combo I find works absolutely beautiful. But anyway, this jacket from Oxford, so I think it's new this year. It's a different style to jackets that I usually wear. Uh, it looks quite good when you're actually off the bike as well. 
got sort of classic lines about it, lots of pockets which I like, so I keep my phone and keys and stuff in it. And I just think it looks good, makes a, makes a change for me to wear this sort of jacket. So again, I'll, I'll put a link below and tell you what the name is. It'll be something Oxfordy sounding. And then, uh, whilst I'm on a roll, you'll, you'll get a theme here, I'm all Oxforded up today. <laughs> I'm wearing Oxford jeans as well, I've got lots of pairs of Oxford jeans. I keep promising to do a jeans review because I wear lots of different jeans on bikes depending on what mood I'm in and all the rest of it. But uh, I've got two or three pairs of these Oxford Advanced Rider Wear jeans. They're really good and they deserve a review of their own right because Oxford did a lot of work on them in terms of coming up with their own fabric in fact to make them single layer but very abrasion resistant. So the upshot of all that is, it makes them very comfortable because you've not got, you know, layers of stuff. I've got other um, jeans that have got uh, some, I think it's called Dyneema inside them. I think that's what they call it. Some have got, I um, can't remember what it's, what it's called now, but basically that yellow material that is very abrasion resistant, which uh, obviously works well, but it makes the jeans flipping uncomfortable. Um, whereas these stand up to the same sort of abrasion, but they're only a single layer, so they just feel like normal jeans when you're wearing them. They have obviously got knee pads in them and all the rest. They've got pockets for hip protectors. I've taken those out, I find them a bit bulky. Uh, but when you're off the bike, these jeans, these particular ones are fairly skinny ones. You may or may not have the legs for it. <laughs> Since I've lost weight, I'm making the most of it. Uh, so I've got these in a, in a skinny fit, but they look absolutely fine when you're off the bike. You don't look like you're some numpty coming off of a motorcycle. So, so I like them. And then uh, while I'm on a roll talking about the kit I'm wearing, last but not least, my boots. Again, these brand new this year to me. I've worn them a lot. Again, they're from Oxford. Uh, can't remember what they're called, I'll put the name up above and again I'll put a link down below. I found them very comfortable again on and off the bike. They're quite protective because they go right up the ankle, uh, got all the right protection in the uh, toe. Uh, the one downside with them is the eyelets at the top I find a little bit flimsy, uh, but that's the only downside. Uh, they look great and they feel very comfortable and I ride them or wear them a lot if I'm wearing a, uh, wearing, riding a retro type bike. So I've got all this new retro gear because in the last year I got myself the Triumph Speed Twin and the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, both obviously retro style bikes, so I just thought, again, tart that I am, that I should be wearing the right kit when I'm on these bikes. Biking is one of those things, isn't it? It's all about the, well to me, it's sort of a lifestyle thing. Uh, you know, biking helps define me. Certainly now I'm doing this YouTube game as well. and. Uh, I like to look the part. I do need to get myself, probably, and I know I'll get, or possibly get some criticism for it, but I need to get myself a, an open face helmet for use in the summer, uh, which is a bit more retro inspired, so I've got the complete ensemble looking as it should do. This Sherry helmet is brilliant, but it's not, not exactly retro, is it? If you're wondering where I'm riding today, I'm just doing one of my favourite little one hour loops that I uh, occasionally do when I've got any spare time on my hands. And at the moment I'm in a little town called Prince's Risborough, which is in, uh, I think we're still in South Buckinghamshire, close to the border with Oxfordshire. And uh, in fact, straight up that hill ahead, if you keep going straight on, you get to what's called Cop Hill. That's where they do that Cop Hill climb, which you might have heard of, which is sort of a vintage car event. They do have bikes there as well. And each year in September, it's a brilliant event. You go along and uh, you can get to see some cracking cars of various ages, hand bikes, as I say, going up Cop Hill. Uh, Cop Hill spelt K-O-P. Used to be part of the international racing circuit, would you believe, before the times of Formula One Grand Prix at uh, places like Silverstone, <laughs> they would go to places like Cop Hill uh, and run the cars up there. Uh, and that was on that very calendar. It stopped in the early 1900s. I don't know, 1930s, I'm thinking, probably stopped and tracks took over. But it's been sort of revived as a local event now, and it's, uh, I thoroughly recommend it to you. Or maybe I'll mention it closer to September again. I haven't been for a year or two. But I should really pop along and, and show you the sorts of bikes that turn up there. It's a great event, particularly if you get the nice weather. Talking of weather, unfortunately, I've had this bike at the wrong time of year. It's very much a fair weather bike, this. It makes a lot more sense, I would think, if you are, do happen to live in a hot country. If you're in California, cruising down Highway 1, Pacific Coast Highway on this would be absolutely brilliant. I don't know if you watch uh, Moto Geo Jamie uh, on that channel. He's, uh, he's a Brit that lives over in California now in the environs of LA. He rides normally a, a, a Ducati Scrambler, but uh, Buys all sorts of bikes, does some great videos, amazing production qualities. If you've not checked out Moto Geo, go and have a look at Jamie's work on there, he's brilliant. 
But this, Jamie, if you're watching, this is the bike you've got to try, mate. This will be right up your street for cruising along those streets. Lovely for uh, nipping along Santa Monica Boulevard, through Beverly Hills, past those massive palm trees. Somewhat different to dreary old blighty here on a uh, early March afternoon. Somebody the other day commented on one of my posts saying, why I'm always slagging off riding motorcycles in the south, or rather in, in England, or the UK, blighty as I call it. And my answer was, because there's always traffic about, I mean look at this, this is one of the better roads. If you come out here nice and early in the morning, by which I mean sort of 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning, it's a lovely ride to ride this, a lovely, ride, lovely road to ride. Come out here at normal times of the day, it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. It's just chocker with traffic and it really just takes all the fun out of it. So that's that's what I don't like so much about riding in England in the southeast. But that's not to say all of England is rubbish. There are pockets like the Peak District, the Lake District, which are absolutely superb. Yorkshire Dales. These are all really good places to ride. Northumberland as well, very quiet for traffic. I'm not sure what the roads are like up there. I haven't ridden up there that much. Maybe that's somewhere I need to go on a tour. Yeah, certainly in this bit of the southeast of England where I live, it's very busy. Nothing beyond me. Let's get over here before the white lines. This is what the rocket is whirling for. Whoops, just missed it. But I not got away with it. There's never, no matter what gear you're in, there's never any lack of power, so you can just squirt by. Gearbox on here is lovely and easy. Around these sweepers. Just a joy to ride. Yeah, so I'm going to miss this big old beast. People ask me, am I going to buy a Rocket 3? And uh, at the moment, well, there's two questions. Would you have one? And are you going to get one? Answer the first question, very definitely yes, I would have one. It's a lovely, lovely machine. I wouldn't have it as my only machine. But lucky for me, I'm fortunate enough to have several bikes, different types that I can ride depending on what I'm doing, whatever the mission is. But I'd love to have one of these in the garage if I had the space. Am I going to buy one? No, purely because I don't have 20 grand at hand. It's an expensive chunk of money for a sort of a play thing. It, it is a bit of, uh, like I said, one of my complaints about the Diablo was that it was a one-trick pony, it was just good for posing on. And this really is kind of like that as well. It's a bit more comfortable to me I could ride for longer periods of time on this because I'm not, uh, you know, the back isn't being jarred on the seat and so on, which the feet four position forced me onto on the XDAV, although of course you can get that to the mid peg position, which I'd like to try just to see how that improves that bike, uh, GCAP if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, this, this bike, I think if I was going to get one, I'd buy the R to get the mid set pegs, and then I'd get the, uh, I'd get the panniers off the GT so I could go touring. You can certainly tour on this bike, it'd be fine. I don't know if I'd bother with a big windscreen off the GT because uh, there's no terrible wind blast off of this. And then if the missus wanted to go on the back, I'd definitely get the little sissy bar or the backrest, whatever they call it in trunk terms, that goes on the best on the back to stop her falling off the back. Because when you wind this on, the acceleration really is quite something. And it just wouldn't look good, would it, if you left your pillion behind? So yes, I'd have one. If I had one, I'd get the R. That's without riding the GT. Maybe I need to ride that too, just to make sure about this. But I think at the moment, I think it is get the R, and then get some of the accessories off the GT to make the bike you want. Those are not a way, though. never mind. If it was 10 or 12 grand, I'd be tempted to save up and get one. But 20 grand is just too much of a stretch for me at this point, for something that really is a just a fun thing to ride a few times a year. Nonetheless, a lovely bike. I've really enjoyed having it. Once again, just a reminder, I've made uh, at least three other videos on this bike so far. I've put some cards up through the video, or now, I'm not sure, depends how it all works out. To the other videos, go and check those out if you've not seen them already. And thank you for watching the video if you've uh, not seen me before. It'd be great to have you subscribe, hit that button down below, hit the notification bell. So I do all sorts of things here on the Missenden Fly. I don't just do bike reviews, but I do the odd vlog. This has been a bit vloggy. I do bike reviews trips and tours at home and abroad, cover all sorts of genres and try and keep the channel as varied as I can so hopefully there's something for everyone to watch so it'd be great to have you along. 
as I say, do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And that way I can see you next time. Alrighty, I think that's about it from a very murky, not great looking day here in uh, South Buckinghamshire. Lucky for me, I've had no white vans though. That's one of the advantages of coming out on a Saturday. But thoroughly enjoyed having this bike. Thanks again to Trump for uh, fitting me in and letting me have a go on it. It's been an absolute blast and I can't wait to uh, have a go again on another one of these, maybe in the summer perhaps. Perhaps I can get the GT for a bit. Maybe do a tour on it, wouldn't that be cool? Alrighty, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Get that visor up. <laughs> Until next time, this has been the Best of Fly. Cheerio. Oh, and no silly comments about why I've got a dark visor and sunglasses and it's a murky day. I've got a sensitive visor, right? I always rock pretty much whenever I'm outdoors, I've got sunglasses on. Sorry about that.